Good morning. Brother, y'all don't run out of here just yet, okay?
When a man says it's just a guy thing, he means there's no rational thought pattern connected with this at all. And you have no chance at all of making it logical. And maybe this doesn't work. When a man says, can I help with dinner? What he means is, why isn't it ready yet? Yeah, I see the grin over there. When a man says, hon, hon, sure, and stumbles around for all of his words and says, honey, or yes, dear, he means absolutely nothing. It's just a conditional response. Oh, it's crazy. Why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you all this to show you that God made us all different. When a man says, you know how bad my memory is, he really means I can remember the theme song of Hogan's Hero, the phone number of the first girl I ever kissed, and the vehicle identification numbers of every car I've ever owned. But yes, I'm sorry, babe, but I forgot your birthday. We all get in these situations. When a man says, oh, don't fuss, I just cut myself a little bit. No big deal. Don't worry about it, you know. Don't worry about it at all. What he really means is, is I've probably severed my limb. You know. <laughs> but if you're not careful, I will bleed to death before long. When a man says, I can't find it, you mean it didn't fall into my outreach hand, so I'm completely clueless. When a man says, I heard you, he really means, I have the foggiest clue of what you just said, and I'm hoping desperately that you can fake it well enough so that you'll not spend the next three days, that three days yelling at me. <laughs> when a man says, you know, I could never love anyone else. What he means is I'm used to the way you yell at me and I realize it could be worse. A whole lot worse. And then when a man says something like, you look really good, you're terrific looking, you look beautiful today, dear. He means, oh, please don't try on one more outfit. I'm hungry and I'm ready to go. You know? When a man says, I'm not lost, I know exactly where we are. He means no one else will ever see us alive again. <laughs> when a man used that excuse, I don't think I can go anymore. I just don't have it in me no more. I just don't have it. I can't go anymore. He means shopping is not a sport. And no, I'm never going to think of it that way ever. I can promise you that. What it shows us here this morning, all these different things, these crazy, funny things, what it shows us is just how unique God made each man. We're so unique to each other. We, some of us like fish products, some of us don't like fish products, some of us like this, some of us like that. We're all different. And that's what's so cool about this, to stop and think for a moment. If you can go with me just for a moment and think of the idea that God loves you so much. And God knows the very hairs on your head. He knows everything about you. And He wants to make you this great Father, this great man of God. He wants to help you get there. So I'm sure all of us in this room this morning, us men, with as areas we failed in. We fall short in. Without question, we fall short. God's so cool because He's trying to show us something this morning. He's trying to show with us this morning that, 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 that we are that unique Father. He created us in His image and His likeness. And Father God wants us to be like Him. Amen. I remember that movie. Where's that movie? I don't remember what the name of that movie is. Maybe just think you'll remember it. But 
Where are you, men of courage? Where are you, men of courage? Courageous. Courageous. Huh? Courageous. Courageous, that's it, yeah. When a man says that that's not what I meant, he means that something I said can be interpreted two ways. And one of the ways makes you sad and angry. I mean the other one. <laughs> Don't want to get caught in a trap, right guys? Never. We think about today, we think about how many homes this morning, their dads are not there. Their dads are not a part of their life, not raising them, not helping with raising them babies. And we find that that's, that's the place where everything is falling down in America and all over the world as far as that goes. That's where it's all falling down at because the Bible says that, that there's supposed to be a head in the household. Right? One head. How I many you know when you get two heads it looks like a monster, Right? We don't need two heads in the household. There should be one head in the household. But we find that men are not taking their responsibility. I can't imagine it. It it eats me alive when I see men who cannot take care of their responsibility. It frustrates me. Aggravates me. Because God created this to be family. God created dads to be just like he is. Father God. God created us men to love our wives as we love the church. That's how much we're to love them. I mean, that's how much we're to put up with their nagging sometimes. <laughs> how much did Christ put up with us, everybody? He put up with us a lot, didn't he? So all he's asking for is us men to love our wives as we love our, to love our church. And he tells us, that don't make your children mad. You know, don't aggravate them. Don't push them to that place where you want to make them mad. Love our babies. Love our children. I'm just thinking, I had to marry a young lady yesterday or the day before, 10 years old. 10 years old. God cares for us all. He loves us. Wow, I'm struggling this morning to get this out. Proverbs 3 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. God provided this for us. Salvation, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself is the gift of God, not the works, least any man should vote. We men are bad about trying to be in control, aren't we? We are. We throw our weight around. We do things that we don't. By nature, that's who we are. We are controlling because if we're the male figure. We're the head of the, you know, all these crazy things that they want to talk about. But the thing of it is, is the Bible tells us that we're to treat our women with respect and with love. Because we want to be treated with respect and we need to show respect to our, to our women. But us guys, we're bad about trying to be in control. We're trying to make things happen. We're good at that, aren't we, guys? Good at, you know, uh, what we call, uh, uh, you know, pulling another one off, you know. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3 says, And he said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Children have the, that attitude. 
of trust. But something happens to us once we begin to feel even the slightest amount of thickness in our old peach fuzz, boys. <laughs> something happens when we start getting this ego in us, guys. Something happens, we kind of start changing when our body starts changing and things begin to change and we begin to do things, but that doesn't give us an excuse to treat people with no respect, man. Love them. Love your love your brothers and sisters. Respect your elders. I thank God for a few good men we have here escaped. Learned how to lean on the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 and 31, it says, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31, But they but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Verse, and then he goes on to tell us that God will supply all our needs, Philippians 4, 19, For God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. Well, ladies, if you got a man out there that's not exactly taking his role, being the head of the household, pray for him. Don't nag him. Don't nag him. It ain't going to do a lick of good. Pray for him. He is the head of your household, whether you like it or not. Pray for him. Lift him up. Encourage him. Encourage him to do the right thing. Pray for him. Us men, we all want to be the breadwinner. We all want to be the mighty hunter. You know, we come home with this bow and arrow and this deer strapped to our back. You know, that's our thought pattern, you know, in our mind of us guys wanting to provide for our family. But God put us in charge. He gave His babies for us to raise Him in the way of the Lord, guys. That's our job. Raise Him in the way of the Lord. Little things. It doesn't take a whole lot. It just takes little things. Just pray with them at night, guys. Pray with your babies at night. Ask them before they go to bed if they want to pray for some boo-boo. I promise there'll be a boo-boo, you know, to be prayed for. Spend time with your babies. Because you only get one shot at it, right? We only get one shot at it. I can think of a million things I did wrong that I should have done that I didn't do. But I can't go back. I can't change it. All I can do is give you some wisdom and say, hey, boys, don't do this again. You know, don't do this. It's a bad idea. You know. So as I close this morning, God said in His Word, He said, if any of you men lack wisdom, or women, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, unbraideth not, and he shall be given to him that wisdom. Read wisdom whether to, what to do or how to do. This prayer, kind of interesting, this prayer and only one other prayer in the Bible, two prayers only in the Bible, a man can pray which the answer is always a yes. This one here in Romans 10, 13. You're going to look that up as a little thing for you to look up later. This scripture in Romans 10, 13 are two scriptures that, 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 that uh, you, when you pray it, the answer is always yes. I thank God for a few good men we learned to lead. Thank God that you men learn how to lead, not lead by your flesh. So in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. This is I say then. Walk in the Spirit, men. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one, the other. So you cannot do the thing that you would. Galatians 20. Christ goes on and says, I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live, flesh lives in faith, and the Son of God who loved me, gave himself for me. Men, we have to lead our lead 
our flesh, not let our flesh lead us. Take care of our families. Let's stand and pray. Father, we come before you this morning and we ask, Lord, that each and every man here today and each and every man around this world, Father, that we're celebrating Father's Day. Help us, Lord, to take on the attributes of you. Help us to take on your attitude. Help us to take on your way. That we acknowledge you in all of our ways, Father. Lord, we want to do right. We want to raise our babies right. We want to be the man of the house. We want to be that good husband. Lord, we need help. So I ask you this morning to help each one of us by your Holy Spirit this morning. Help us to be the man you called us to be, to take on that position, that place you called us to go. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Father. We love you with all of our hearts, Father. Give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Do they need prayer before we close this morning? Nope.